So now that we have the transmission and transfer case all rebuilt, have this all painted up, it's time to mount it back to the engine. But before we do that, we gotta go through and clean up this flywheel. So this flywheel was resurfaced about 10 years ago, but obviously since then it's picked up some dirt and some surface rust that we need to go through and clean up. So I'll go through, degrease all the dust and dirt, and then we'll see what we can do to get this rust off. So now that I have the flywheel degreased, I want to go through and hit it with some scotch Bright. But what I did, I took a few bearings that I had, some extra bearings that I pulled out of the transmission, and just made it so I can spin this. I could spin the flywheel, and then get a, try and get a nice finish on it. And then by spinning it, my hope is that I won't be putting any grooves in it rather than if I was just going by my hand. 2,000 years later. So now that the flywheel's all cleaned up, we can get it mounted to the engine. So let's get that pulled off the stand. Mm -hmm. So it feels pretty good to have the engine off the stand for the first time in over a decade and it'll feel even better once we get it mounted in the frame. So the first thing we're going to do back here is mount the backing plate that obviously needs to go behind the flywheel. And with the backing plate on, now we can mount the flywheel. Now there are two bolts or studs that have sort of a cone on them to align the flywheel. So there's going to be two holes on the back of the flywheel that are a little bit bigger, and we just need to make sure that we line those up correctly. So now we can put the nuts and lock washers on, and I'm also going to go through and put a little bit of red Loctite on all of these, just to make sure nothing loosens up on us. So now that we have the nuts started, snug down, we're going to go through and torque them to 40 foot-pounds. And now the 40 foot-pounds may want to just spin the motor over like it is here, so I just have a little pry bar, that I'm going to put on one of the, these bolts to lock the flywheel in place so we can fully torque these all down. Alright, so now that we have the flywheel all torqued down, we can go through and put the clutch on. But first I'm going to put just a bit of grease on that pilot bushing. Alright, so now we're just going to go through Degrease the flywheel just to make sure there's nothing touched it with greasy gloves or anything like that. Just to make sure that there's no grease on the flywheel that the clutch could pick up. And we have a new clutch. So I'm going to do the same thing. Just spray it down, make sure there's no grease or anything, any oils from assembly or shipping that may be on it before we install it. Alright, now that the clutch is degreased, we can go through and install that with the alignment tool. Now generally on the clutch, it might say engine or transmission side. I don't see anything. I'm going to put the side that has the spline sticking out towards the transmission. And that alignment tool will hold the clutch in place right where it needs to be. And then we have the new pressure plate. So same thing, we'll go through, degrease this, just to make sure there's nothing on it. And then get this installed. Alright, so now that we have the clutch and pressure plate on, we're back up at the transmission to put the new throw out bearing in. So we'll slide that on and then we gotta work this little spring from here over to this and that's what we'll hold this 
back. All right, so while we're still at the transmission, we can go ahead and install the bell housing on the transmission. All right, so now the transmission's all set. We have the clutch flywheel pressure plate, that's all set. So now we just need to bring them together. And to do that, I'm gonna use this transmission jack. Try and get the transmission and transfer case off this bench to here, drop it down, and then we'll try and get it, get it aligned and get it attached to the motor. Let's see how it goes. All right, so we got the engine and transmission all together now. I was fighting myself with the, the bell housing of the transmission hitting that blocking. We have everything together. So now we'll just go through, take the grill off just to make it easier to get it in. I already have the cross member in, so we'll be able to just drop it right in place. All right, so we got it all installed. The driver's side bolts dropped right in. I had a little tough time on the passenger side getting the bolt holes to line up, but with a big enough pry bar, we were able to get that done. So I still have to put the yokes on the transfer case. I still have to paint them. It's a little cold to paint today. Uh, I have the yokes and the drive shafts all ready to go. I just need to paint them and then we can get those installed. But at least for right now, we can still go through and install the parking brake setup on the back of the transfer case. Uh, and then we'll be able to install the exhaust as well. Now I'm gonna put some thread locker on these bolts because these go right in through to the transfer case into the oil galley. All right, well, I'm not gonna be able to get as far as I thought with this parking brake. Uh, this arm, this bracket that actually 
actuates the springs and, and moves everything in here needs to be on first before I put this backing plate on. I can't get it on now after the fact. Uh, and this obviously is not painted, so I need to get this painted and then pull this banking plate off, install that, and then I'll be able to finish the install of the parking brake. All right, well, if we can't do the parking brake right now, at least we can get the exhaust installed. So we got the exhaust all mounted in, at least mostly mounted in. I do have the back just wire tied up. Uh, I gotta look and see exactly how that last hanger is supposed to go, where it's supposed to mount. That's one of the things with having taken this apart 10, almost 15 years ago is I don't exactly remember how it all goes back together. So for next steps on this Jeep, we have quite a few options and I got a bunch of parts in, so let's jump over to those. So I have all the stuff to rebuild the steering, new tie rod ends, rebuild the drag links, the belt crank, put new bearings in the steering box so we could go the route of rebuild the steering. I got a new master cylinder in. This one's for disc brakes. The last one I had or the other one I already had was for drum brakes all around. So we got a new one for disc brakes and a proportioning valve. Like I mentioned before, I have quite a few parts to paint up the drive shafts. I still got to do that, the parking brake. Rebuild the clutch linkage, and I did tease in the last video that I also have something going off the back of the transfer case. So, quite a few different routes that we can go right now, and I'm not sure exactly what the next video will be. But thank you for taking the time and watching this video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.